Welcome, I'm David DeCerto, Director of Programming here at the Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen Center for Thought and Culture. I hope you had an opportunity to uh, experience our virtual screening of the searing drama, Mass. I'm honored to be joined here today uh, by the film's writer-director, Fran Kranz, uh, one of its stars, Emmy-winning actress, Anne Dowd, and Jennifer Hubbard, uh, who tragically lost her daughter in the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre in Newtown, Connecticut. Uh, before we get started, uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. It really is an honor to have you all here with us today. And uh, before we begin, maybe we'll just take a look at the trailer. How many people are coming? There'll be four of them. Richard, Linda, Mrs. Jay, and Gail Perry. Thank you for agreeing to meet us. You're welcome. I'm gonna leave you alone. Let me know if you need anything. You say you wanna heal. Is this how? We're not here to attack you. And we promise that. We wanna know how this happened. We need your help with that. I'm willing to help. When you talk about blame on your part, I wanna know what you're referring to. It's very hard to answer. Well, please try. It's not just one thing. Tell me about your son. What would you like to know? Everything, I wanna know everything. Why? Why do I wanna know about your son? Because he killed mine. It's not our fault, Richard. No! Fran, first of all, congratulations. This is a powerful film. Uh, it's, uh, it's emotionally intense uh, that deals with a lot of, uh, you know, obviously very sensitive, serious subject matter. Uh, the unthinkable, uh, the, the violent death of a child, uh, of children. Um, and uh, for those who haven't seen the screening yet, it deals with uh, a couple who lost their son in a school shooting uh, who agree to sit down with the parents of the shooter. Um, and you play the mom of the shooter in the film. Okay. Uh, now this is also your directorial debut. So I, I have to start off by asking, what was it about this film or this story that made you want to tackle it right out of the gate as a director? Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting this question a little bit now. And um, it, never, it never occurred to me that way. It never, it, the, the, the thought was, I'm going to tackle this. Um, I started doing this reading because I felt just as a person and as a parent, I had to. Um, my daughter's five and uh, it was after the, um, the, the day, no, it was the day of the Parkland shooting. I was driving in Los Angeles and I had to pull over. I was listening to a parent and I had to pull over. Um, and uh, that had never happened to me before, though I can remember exactly where I was um, on December 14th, 2012. Um, but this had never happened to me that I was so, I was just overwhelmed and had to sort of stop. And uh, I, I thought, well, I, I guess it's because I'm a parent now. She was about one and a half. And I'd always been sort of fascinated and kind of terrified by forgiveness. Um, I remember in college, I learned about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. And I was amazed and I was inspired watching these amnesty hearings and reading about them, but I also sort of deep down thought, I, I, I can't participate in that. I don't think I could do that. I'm not sure I could forgive. And that scared me because I thought, well, then the alternative is that you're, you're stuck in this war with grief and hatred and blame and resentment. And, and uh, that's, it was terrifying. So I had to confront those feelings again as a parent in the wake of these shootings and the frequency of it all and feeling this fear for what, it, what is this country my daughter is gonna grow up into. And, and so I started reading about it. So there was never a movie, you know? I, I, was just, I just felt like I desperately had to know more about what was going on. So, you know, I was just on Amazon ordering books and going online and reading things. And, and then I came across these meetings 
there would not, you know, there wasn't a lot of detail, of course, but I thought, my God, like, that's it. That's, that, it's the TRC again. It's, it's, it's these meetings, these people trying to move forward, trying to heal, trying to um, potentially find forgiveness or reconciliation. And, and it, was, it was at the very heart of this thing that I was afraid of and but hoped for. And so I, 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 you know, I always dreamed about making a movie, but it was never about I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this first. It just was, I, if I can explain this correctly or articulate it, I just had to do it. I, my life was taken over by this need to tell this story because so much of it was this personal exploration into my own ability. Um, it's okay, love. To, to do this, I'm sorry. It's a very emotional being here, you know? Um, so it was like a need, you know? So the, the story actually came at the end of this search of yours. It wasn't that you came up with the idea no, for a story. No, 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 no. Yeah, I came across these and, and thought, this sounds so sort of simplistic or stupid, but I thought, that's, that's a movie. That, I, need, that's, I wanna know how you do this personally. Mm -hmm. I want to dramatize this, you know, because you know, I, I wanted to write, I've dreamed of writing and directing. I was writing another screenplay. I've just never had the sort of guts or courage to just follow through and do it. No one was giving me any money. You know, I was an actor with a screenplay, so it helped that this was a movie in a room in one location, because I thought, well, yeah, I might be able to pay for this myself, you know? So, you, you well, know. that is part of the, the power of this film. Essentially, you said it, it's, it's Four chairs, a table, yeah. and four incredible actors at the top of their game. Yeah. You know, yeah. basically conducting a master class. Um, had you read about that particular arrangement? Had there been parents who had met with shooter, the, the parents of a? I, of a I have I've read about a, a few instances like this, um, just online and in a couple books. But but truly, there there was. I had been thinking about. I read uh, Desmond Tutu's No Future Without Forgiveness when I was younger and it stuck with me for the reasons I said. I, 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 I was amazed but terrified by it. And I saw a documentary, Long Night's Journey and Today, that covered four of these amnesty hearings and I watched these people with sort of decency and, and they were polite and how they treated the perpetrators and forgave them and there was even laughter and I thought, how on earth is this happening, you know? So, so I was sort of fixated on these, these ideas and I loved what I loved, what I thought was so, so extraordinary was that all this was, was just people, people. <laughs> you know, just um, all they had at their disposal was t expressing themselves, you know? Yeah. And so I thought, that's it, that's all I want to do, and I want to honor that by just making it a, a movie in a room, and we're not going to leave, we don't get a score, we don't get flashbacks, we don't get these conveniences of film. We're gonna, we're, they're gonna come into the room, they're gonna sit down, we're stuck with them until they leave. And, it, and let's see if they figure it out or what happens. You know, I, I, I wanted to celebrate that and elevate that because I think it's so extraordinary people can do that or do, do that. You know, <laughs> that's <mess already. laughs> actually a really interesting segue uh, into the next question in the sense that what's really on display in that room with those four characters, but the four actors who portray them is really their humanity. And um, in taking on the role of Linda, you are asked to convey that humanity uh, in the mom of the shooter and, and make her uh, or convey almost her as being worthy of that empathy. Was there any hesitancy on your part to try to uh, take that on or did you see that particularly challenging? The role itself? Yeah, and the idea that, you know, I guess you could understand the, some people might watch a saying, why should I feel empathetic for the mother of the shooter? And you do it so masterfully in the film that you humanize her uh, and you make her uh, you know, incredibly empathetic in the film. I'm trying to desperately change the subject in my mind because I'm with the soul of strength and uh, Courage and I, what existed in our imaginations is here in the room with us. And I just don't know what to say because what Jenny lived is what we all are afraid of for our children. I'm very grateful to you. 
in, in answer to your question. It doesn't matter what others think, you know, when you're playing a role, you, you don't worry about anyone else because your only allegiance is to the character you'll have the privilege of coming to know. It's beautifully put. Now, Jennifer, as Anne so rightly points out, uh, for you, this isn't fiction. Tragically, this is something that you lived. Um, and uh, first of all, I speak with uh, Anne in saying uh, that words can't express the gratitude we have uh, for you being with us today. When I first called you, uh, my first words to you were that I was kind of hesitant to even ask you to participate because I didn't know how you would react to a film like this, you know, uh, but I, I, I tell people the story within five minutes of the phone conversation, Jennifer is trying to make me feel better. Uh, and uh, so having watched the film and obviously uh, given what you experienced, you brought a unique perspective to the watching of this film. What are just some of your initial thoughts um, about the movie? I watched it twice. The first time I watched it, I was, I was terrified to watch it. I was terrified at what it would bubble up. Um, I was terrified that it would have been all wrong. Like it, they would have gotten it. Oh God. All wrong. And I, so I sat there and I watched it um, and I turned the volume way, 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 way down because I have a 17 year old and I was like, oh, what's he gonna like, is he gonna wanna watch this too? And, and I, don't, I don't know what I'm getting into. And when it ended, I literally bowed my head because you showed humanity. Like you captured everything, everything on, as a, as a parent who lost, um, there was so much grace um, that, that I felt towards Adam's mom. Um, and I could probably get chastised for that. Um, but you showed humanity. We're all moms. Um, and I think that, that what the film showed that is so missing in just, in, in our culture, is that we're all hurting. We're all, we, we are all carrying this burden. And I love the fact that, that the film showed the humanity and, and the brokenness of all of us, regardless of, of how we are broken, whether it's something that our child unleashed or a hurt that was, that was launched at, at a family. The film just, it's so hard to, to put words around it, but it captured so much in, in that time. So then I watched it a second time and I was like, okay, I have to take notes on this because there's so, there were so many points in, in, in the film where I just said, amen. Yes, that's exactly it. Like uh, there, there, was, there, was, there was one point where you say, does my story matter? Yes, I want to say yes, <laughs> yes it matters. Um, and I didn't take notes the second time because it got to the end and I was like, oh, I forgot to take notes. <laughs> because I, I get, there was other parts of it where I just thought, wow, I, I felt that, I've been there, I've, I've known that, um, I've known that feeling. Thank you for making the film. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. Thank you for that. It was beautiful. <laughs> thank you. I, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I obviously, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know everything. I, I never know everything, but I've, I've read some things and I, this, this, it was learning about um, parents, children, students, teachers. It was learning the personal details, um, where they wanted to go to school, or what they wore that day, or you know, who were they they were dating, or what they liked to do. You know, what it, these things that that was all that mattered. It wasn't sort of statistics or laws or loopholes. It was just these people. 
and I, I don't know them. I've never had experience like this, but I felt that the personal knowledge was leading me in this sort of empathetic direction, and, and I felt like that's all that matters. It's we just telling the story of these four human beings, and I tried to treat them as such. There's not good or bad. There's not wrong or right. I knew immediately as a parent that I was going to screw up every day. <laughs> and um, it's such a bizarre thing because you love so intensely, but you're losing constantly. And I'm just constantly being like, ah, you screwed up. And, my, and so I, I felt, and this is, this is so, I feel this feels difficult to say with you here, and, but I felt I couldn't, I couldn't find a monster in these stories with the parents. I found monstrous things, right? But I, I couldn't really see, I just, I did feel empathy for the characters. And um, so I tried to write them that way as four human beings. And it made me crazy putting myself in these four shoes and fighting with each other and sort of improvising. I'm an actor, so I just, that's all I knew how to write. I just improvised these sort of scenes. Um, but I, I, I just tried to plead their case, you know, and speak truthfully. and. I just believed in their humanity, you know. Well, the film certainly embraces uh, that humanity, uh, that complexity of the human condition, the wounded human condition. Um, now, Anne, that wounded human condition is given voice uh, in the film, essentially by you and the three other actors who sit across from a table for the duration of the movie, face to face, with really uh, nothing else. What was that like to experience as an actor? Well, what, what we were able to find in the two and a half days we had a rehearsal, which was three weeks before we shot, was um, trust in one another. And we knew it was safe and that we were safe with one another. Mm -hmm. So there were no walls and this a man at the helm, if you will. So we knew we were all in it for the same reason and we knew the respect uh, that they all deserved and that it would, you know, the, the uh, responsibility in dealing with a subject that uh, is um, really in life. It's not just in the imagination. So either you're all in or you're not. And so the whole thing was a gift I never felt so grateful to a character because she, she trusted me with her grief and her life, which broke. I love your little girl, by the way. She's so precious. Thank you. I hope to meet her one day. You will. She's so lovely. <laughs> I didn't meet your boy. <laughs> I didn't see him, but I saw your precious girl. You know, at its heart, this film is a, is a you know, you, the characters keep saying, you, particularly your character, tell me a story. And really, you tell a story of each of these characters. You tell a story of all of us, because we can all see a little bit of ourselves uh, in this film. Um, but at its heart, it's, it's a film about healing. Mm -hmm. um, why particularly did you choose the church as a setting to tell this story? <laughs> It, it, it's a, it had to be <laughs> in a spiritual place. Uh, I never had any question about that because I just thought the themes that life and death and healing and reconciliation, forgiveness, that these are spiritual themes. Like I, I said, I, I, I learned and read a lot about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Now I'm quoting this all the time, but Desmond Tutu wrote that Forgiveness, reconciliation, and reparation are not the normal currency of political discourse. They're more at home in uh, a religious realm, a religious sphere. And so there was never any question this had to be in some kind of spiritual place. I was raised Catholic. I, I don't, uh, I'm not a practicing Catholic or Christian. I don't think of myself as religious, but I like church. I like going. I like a good sermon. I love the stories and the themes from the Bible, and I think they're valuable, and we should keep them close, you know, so I'm not afraid of it. I'm not, I'm not afraid of the religious connotations and the themes of the film, because I, I also think searching for meaning, searching for understanding, I'm trying to understand the, 
the unknown or the unexplainable, the unimaginable is a spiritual pursuit. So to me, it had to be there. And it was just because of my background. I've, I've said, you know, if I was Jewish, it might have been in a temple. I don't, I don't know. But mm -hmm. that's where I placed it. But I felt it had to be close. Um, it was also important to me that this was just the work of people, though. And they are in the parish hall. They are in a sort of secular space. That they, They're doing the work themselves. It's, it's, this is human work, mm -hmm. making that effort to heal. It, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just humans, you know, figuring it out, struggling through this and the challenge of that. But that there's sort of, you know, God or, or some notion of God, some no kind of spirituality is just there if you need it or if you choose to sort of go towards it. Mm -hmm. You talked about the character of Jay. I, I, I don't know. If, I, I get afraid of spoilers, but I guess people have seen it or I don't know who cares. But <laughs> he, he's at war with grief. He likes to, he thinks, he's, he thinks he's actually mastered the situation with his knowledge of it, whether it's science or channeling, his, he, he, channeling himself through activism, his pain through activism, these, these ways that he's dealt with it, but truly he's, sitting, he's still sitting on, it, on so much anger. Mm -hmm. And this, this war with grief, it comes out, and I'm trying to sort of suggest with his, his role and his journey that he comes to realize that there is something missing that there's another component to this that he hasn't necessarily addressed. And I think it's, it is, it's a spiritual one. It, it doesn't have to be a Christian God or a God or even God. It's, it's this notion of embracing the unknown and having a relationship with mystery and these things you can't explain. And, and I, think, I think it's important. I think spirituality has its own humility and humility leads to interdependence and our need for one another. And it, and it sort of takes him the film to sort of, I think, see that something that he's missing something wow I know. that's that's beautiful and that really actually is a great lead in uh you know as you said this film is it's not an easy viewing film it's intense at times it's emotionally gut-wrenching and heartbreaking but woven throughout there really is this grace throughout the whole film mm -hmm. um and again i don't want to give anything away that grace i think is no more evident than in a scene when one of the characters kind of gives up that war with anger and, and uh, uh, pain and really makes this radical act of surrendering to love and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, and now, Jennifer, you sort of, in your own journey, kind of experienced something uh, similar to that. And you recounted in your, your wonderful book, Finding Sanctuary, and I, I want to get the quote right, so if you just let me read this one quote. Uh, you said, surrendering debts takes time and does not mean forgetting. Forgetting would return us to where we started, what we had not learned, what we know now, and with a heart not yet changed. And that would just be insanity and create a never-ending cycle of hurt. No, forgiveness is releasing another from the debt you feel owed and giving your heart permission to heal instead of keeping score. Maybe forgiving has to do more with us than with whomever we are forgiving. Maybe in offering forgiveness, we find a place of peace where our own hearts can heal. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh -huh. Well, and, it's, and you, you mentioned it. Um, you, talked, you just talked about it. Um, what, I, what I discovered was that there's this expectation or understanding that when you go through something like this or there's some sort of trial that affects your life and everybody's looking at you saying do you forgive do, do you forgive them how do you forgive them and there's these these contrived notions at least I had them in my mind of how that forgiveness should look it's it's the age-old question that we all struggle to answer and we seek for what is the right sort of place of forgiveness and I think that in in that quest for looking for what that means everybody kind of pokes at it mm. in different ways yeah. like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna forgive when I can actually justify the life that I'm defending I'm gonna forgive when I get the retribution that I think is is due um, and I felt like in the film there was a lot of that well why aren't you acting a certain way? Because if you acted a certain way, this would be a whole lot easier. Yeah, yeah. And, and you make it very beautifully known that 
none of that Matt it's an internal thing forgiveness is internal and when we can be introspective and look at ourselves and what is it that's holding us to carrying this holding this person to a debt that they're never going to pay they could never repay no one can ever bring Catherine back to me I you can't it's you can't do it and so I I had to really look at myself and decide did I want to do I want to live a life where I'm expecting someone to bring Catherine back? To, that's insanity. That's not going to happen. Um, and you can you can expand this on any sort of whoever we're holding accountable for for taking away the hurt that we feel. You can't. You can't. And so I came to a place where I just I have to I have to release the debt. I don't want to walk through life holding people accountable for something that they may or may not feel accountable for. It's a, it's a personal thing. It's not another thing. And I found that when I came to this place of realizing that you're not accountable to me and I'm not accountable to anyone else but myself and my God, I became a far more peaceful person. And I saw things in, in, a, in a way that when I, when I walked away from the film, I was so excited for the characters because they were going to start seeing things in life that had I carried around that weight of, you owe me, you, you need to burn because of what you did, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see what joy really looks like. I wouldn't have heard the laughter, the belly laughter of my now 17-year-old. I probably would be so hung up in, in retribution that I would miss out on spectacular sunsets and a great night's sleep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's that's, beautiful. Yeah, that really is. Yeah. And I think what comes across so beautifully in the film, again, that whole idea about not, uh, not going for the easy answer is that not everything is tied up neatly at the end. Uh, yeah. You know, you're, you respect their grief enough to understand that grief is an ongoing, healing is an ongoing process. It's a lifelong process. We were talking about that before. Um, but despite the heaviness of the film, despite the heaviness of the subject matter, you can say that this film at the end, even with those small gestures, again, I don't want to give too much away, but with the small gestures that are there, the, the, the leaning towards the music, uh, the two hands that touch each other, uh, even the embrace between the two mothers, uh, you can honestly say this is a hopeful film. Uh, mm -hmm. This is an almost, dare I say, uplifting film. Um, and I just wanted to commend you on that. Uh, it's so... Thanks. No, I, 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 don't, know, I don't think I could have, have done all this, <laughs> you know, if I didn't believe that. I want to believe that I can do these things. I'm scared and I'm, I, don't know, I don't know what I'm capable of. <laughs> But I want to believe in it, so I, I, I believe the film is incredibly hopeful, but um, I know it's sort of, it's a, a big emotional experience, but I, th I think it's because I hope that it's meaningful. Um, You know, yeah, you, know, you go, you go. <laughs> I was gonna, I, I, I just, I love the notion of this, this, it's a debt that you're no longer asking for, you know? And um, we, we, lear we learned this phrase today, costly grace. And that's sort of what, that, that, that's, that's what it reminds me of. And, and Desmond Tutu talks about forgiveness is, is giving up the right to return, you know, uh, the, 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 to give back, to pay back the perpetrator in his own coin. These notions of sort of just giving that up, not have, there's no, there's no retribution. The effort is only to heal or reconcile. And, and, um, and uh, gosh, I, I, I'm speaking to grief and how it doesn't go away. And you know, I have a recurring sort of landscape or image in this film that, that I, wanted to, I wanted to find a landscape that represented grief, that represented this sort of subterranean that we carry with us and, and how it doesn't go away, you live with it. It just, the relationship changes. Mm -hmm. And so when we see this, this image recur, that it just changes, it's modified. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that will always be there. Sorry, go ahead. No, not at all. I was going to say two things, and now I, it's, it's okay to say this with Jennifer because 
she's miles beyond. Uh, there was tremendous laughter in the shooting of it in, around the table between takes. You would have been stunned, mm -hmm. uh, weeping with laughter, yeah. but always knowing when it was time to, to drop back in. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's what made it possible, mm -hmm. in a way, mm -hmm. uh, to release what we could and come back to where we needed to be. I was going to say something else about grief, which is unrelated to this particular story, but my friend told me this yesterday. She has a very, very old friend whose mother is dying, mm. uh, and they escaped Nazi Germany, the, the mother and, and her, her closest friend, who, turned, who happened to be her cousin. So the mother, as she's leaving this world, was weeping uncontrollably, and her daughter asked her, what is it? And she was talking to her cousin and her grief for having to say goodbye to her cousin. It was as real as if it had happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you realize what we hold with us, mm -hmm. the capacity for the heart to hold and the soul to hold. If it's, as you say, you owe me, then it's a burden. Mm -hmm. If it's just what has meant so much to us in our lives and is kept safe, without judgment, mm -hmm. wow, there's just no limit, is there, to I, what can happen? I feel like that whole judgment, that judgment piece is so important. And, and not, not being the person that says, oh, you know, they, look at what their child did. Um, look at what, look at what you did. Uh, we all, I mean, we're all broken. We're, we're all, we've all done things that wreaked havoc in their own small way. And I, I think that there's a beauty in, in being real purposeful and, and careful and not to cast that judgment and not casting this, this veil of, look at what your child, look at what your child did and look at, look at the pain that, that your child Un unleashed. I, I look at what happened in my life after Catherine died and just watching my son struggle, going through a horrific divorce, watching my family just just struggle. And yes, it was it was so painful. Um, but there's no fault. There's no fault that that needs to be placed for anything because in those moments of of pain and and trials. Um, was a deeper appreciation for for self and and compassion for others. There's just but you knew when it, you had to walk away. Yeah, because the the, the difference which you're teaching me as we sit between uh, uh, judgment, but also knowing there is no way forward here. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if you're faced with a family or someone who cannot let down those walls and experience the grief of what they are going through and says, you know, uh, refuses to look at one's own self, mm -hmm. then you know you have to walk away because yeah. there is no conversation there. Yeah. And protection of self, which is the gift God yeah. gave us. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, it's, wow. I think that there's a gentleness um, that just comes when, when you can walk away. When you can say, I'm just, can't do it. I can't do this anymore. I just can't do it. I don't want to be, I don't want to be that face that's hard and tired and, and so, that's not what I want people to see. I want, I, I want to be this, I want to be in a, in a tender and a gentle place where mm, I beautiful. can be a positive impact and not be a detriment, not be the one that, oh, she's so angry. I wish she, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be that. But it takes, it, it takes take introspection. It takes time. It take, there's no timeline. There's no checkbox. There's, there's, there's the ability to sit with self and to be sad and to be disappointed and with whomever you call your, your God with whatever your faith might be, but just to be able to sit 
with that in that stillness and not feel like you've got to go create a legacy or you've got to go change laws or you've got to go uh, you you've you've got to hold someone accountable it's just sitting with the sadness and the disappointment of whatever that hurt or pain that was launched into your life. I mean, you can work through that. You come out on the, on the other side with an understanding that we're going we're gonna to have these issues and everybody in their, my, my trial and my darkness was losing Catherine. Someone else right now is saying goodbye to their baby and my loss doesn't underscore their loss and I only hope that they can find that space and that stillness and realize that it hurts but there is also something beautiful on the other side of it yeah. and you speak to it in the film like she says I'm ready and, and <laughs> I want to say yeah you are <laughs> yeah you are uh, so Jennifer uh, every parent who lost a child on that fateful day back in, in 2012, uh, navigated and handled their grief in his or her own way. Uh, you write uh, so beautifully in your book about, uh, in your, for you, uh, it was your Catholic faith that sustained you uh, mm -hmm. and got you through that time. Uh, could you speak a little bit about mm -hmm. that? Um, well, I think in the initial weeks, months, um, it's not surprising that really the only place that I cried was in church, um, almost to the point where it was awkward to go to church because people would, would see me and just sobbing. Um, and I wasn't really sure why, but I just knew that when I sat in those pews, um, it was hard. It was just, it was, it was a moment of just pure sadness. But I think in retrospect that it was the place that I could cry because that was really where I encountered God. Um, and, you know, sitting during Mass, I mean, it got to the point where we had to change the parish that we attended uh, because it became just this feat of, you know, Freddie would brace because he was going to church and he knew that, oh, she's going to collapse because here we are and, and you know, people were watching and it just, it became, a, the church became a place that wasn't necessarily where I went to pray. Um, and I realized that I stopped crying in church and I started bracing. Um, and through prayer, um, I would spend a lot of time just sitting at my kitchen table and reading scripture and writing in my journal and um, what I realized is that some of the some of the prayer habits that I had before Catherine died were preparing me for after she died um, and what was before she died 10 or 15 minutes of just you know just praying and and doing what I was supposed to do um, turned into hours of just sitting at the table and really seeking God and through the course of of my healing I really found that the God that I knew going into Catherine's dying was not necessarily the God who I encountered after. Um, and my faith in having that personal and, and transparent and authentic relationship um, with God is what changed it for me. I, I think that's where I found my true healing because I could pour out to, to the only one that I think can can possibly take away the hurt of losing a child. Wow. The, the film, as you just mentioned, you know, obviously deals with a specific incident, a specific type of pain. Um, but I think, I, as, again, as you say in your book, talking about your own experience, the lessons that you learned through this suffering can apply to any, I mean, as, as a, as a city, as a country, as a world, we've just been through 18 months of incredible suffering, incredible tragedy. Uh, might not be the exact same type of tragedy that you're depicting in this film, but uh, what, you know, you said you didn't come to this film with an agenda trying to make this film. It kind of happened through this, this personal search of yours. But now that you have made this film, and it is such a powerful film, what would you hope that a film like this 
could in some small way contribute to, you know, in terms of maybe inviting people into a conversation? Mm -hmm. What would your hope be? Oh, gosh. You know, I really, I worry about how divided the country is, right? So I worry about the world or country my daughter's going to grow up into. I worry about how we, be, we make it easier and easier to be isolated and, and speak to each other through some, whatever online platform as opposed to being in the physical presence of someone. I worry about how that changes our behavior and changes the, our ethics and the way we treat people. Um, you, we seem to be able to kind of normalize hating people we don't know. The rhetoric is so intense online or in the media. And you can't, you don't speak that way to a person. You see their sort of humanity kind of immediately. There's something, there's something about being in the physical presence of someone. So I, I hope the movie can kind of encourage that, the kind of need and the sort of importance of human connection, physical human connection, and being in the presence of people and community. Um, I hope it can sort of inspire conversations, that, you know, big and small. Because like I said, you know, I thought these meetings, this is extraordinary. What they're doing is extraordinary, but maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe it shouldn't, maybe it should be more ordinary. You know, maybe we should be talking like this more. Or, you know, we don't see enough of this from our leaders or whatever it is. You know, making, bringing this into our sort of daily life a little bit. Um, uh, and I don't know, these are sort of lo maybe lofty goals and we are what we are, but I wish for that. I mean, I... There's sort of a final thought to the film. Of course, it's about forgiveness, but I thought, and you're, you're speaking to it, that, and I heard it in there, um, and I'm the worst at articulating this, I swear, and I've noticed that people interpret the ending of the movie all different kinds of ways, and I'm okay with that, sort of letting it go and being what it is, but I, I felt like, you know, forgiveness doesn't sort of necessarily benefit each party equally, right? Each person equally, you know? And I, I sometimes wonder, is there a transactional quality to it where I can forgive and, and feel this sort of weight lifted, but what does it do for them? And I wanted to explore that, and it got me to this place of thinking, you know, there's something else. There's something about seeing the suffering in another person that leads you to con see their humanity and connect with them as a human being and, in, and embracing and acknowledging and appreciating all of our suffering mm -hmm. It, it, it sort of makes forgiveness almost another topic, you know? Like it's almost, I don't want to say it's irrelevant, but it's over there and it's wonderful and it's miraculous. But if we can sort of appreciate the shared suffering in all of us, it, 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 then that's something else. Then that's the connection that we all kind of share, our shared humanity through suffering. And I, and I, I think there's sort of, there's a character trying to express that. Um, that if we can sort of just an, embrace even the things that scare us, uh, some of this might not even be necessary, you know? And I, I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, point, there's a point in the film, and I, I hope I don't give it away, but I was so taken. <laughs> I, we, yeah, I was <laughs> so taken with one of the scenes where the shooter's parents are actually sitting in the victim's parents' seats. Yeah. And I thought, we all have a shared responsibility to just be humans first, to what you're saying, regardless of the burdens or the, the loss that we're, that we're carrying, the forgiveness that's due or not, not due. We are part of a humanity that we've forgotten about in so many different ways. I think what you just said is it's worrisome uh -huh. because I think when we forget that we're sitting in, sitting on this place of earth with other human beings, when we forget that, we're, we're done. We're done. We do a disservice to all of the people that we're trying to honor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. What has the, what has the reaction been? Have you shown this to oh. groups who have been impacted <laughs> by this type of violence? What, what has the reaction been by audiences? No, um, I mean it seems to it seems to move people, right? I mean it's been successful, you know, as this sort of emotional journey, this big emotional experience. I don't I don't know, you know, and I this is so. Um, I've never had any experience with anything like this, and I've had. 
from the very beginning this sort of concern and insecurity about who am I to do, why, why should I do this, why do I, I don't have any experience or authority to tell this story, who am I to think you can talk about this, or, and as I get closer to it actually being, you know, sort of released, it's at the front of my mind, the communities, the families, survivors, the people I read about, you know, and, and to think that, don't tell my story, you know, mm -hmm. so I have a lot of concern about that, you know, this has been sort of the most, rewarding journey of uh, my life. But to sit here with you <laughs> is the most exceptional moment of that journey because um, is all I think about. You know, these people that I, I sort of started to care about from afar. Um, so I, do, I don't know the, the bigger reaction. I don't know, you know, but um, I want to know. I hope it promotes sort of positive conversation or change. You know, I often thought, and I don't know, I'd be curious your thoughts, but my perspective, it doesn't seem to be changing. And I think, what's happening? How does this keep happening? What, is, what are we doing wrong? What is wrong with us? And I thought, Maybe we have to have a different mode of thinking. Maybe it needs a different approach, a different perspective. And, and that's why, you know, when reading and just reading and reading and reading, I've, all I cared about were the people. And I thought, what if we focused on the people and sat with the people and lived with them for a while in their shoes? We couldn't possibly let this keep going on. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, I, I wonder, you know, I, I I tried very hard not to make it political. I, I don't have agenda. I believed in each of my characters equally. Um, I think it's this multifaceted, incredibly complex thing. But I think it starts with how we treat one another and feeling that empathy towards one another and being in these people's shoes and thinking about them instead of the issues, you know? Um, so I would love that. I would worry about it becoming this or that or red or blue or left or right. And then what you said, we're all humans, and this, this, this sort of, this, this, that it's us, you know, and then we're sort of under the same roof, and it's us, and how we, how we look at one another, how we treat one another, it starts there. Wow. I get, well, well said. Um, one of the questions that both moms ask in the film, it's one of the more heartbreaking moments, uh, is when they both wonder, did their child's lives have meaning, uh, uh, have purpose? And uh, the um, Evans mom, the, the, the young man who was shot, says that she had made him a promise that she would make sure that his life would have meaning. Um, you, in a similar way, write about that a little bit in your book and say how, without minimizing the, the emotional pain and suffering you went through, that you would not be the person you are today apart from that suffering. That's right. And part of that legacy is uh, Catherine's sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and your efforts uh, with that initiative? Yeah, and it's, I think that we're also afraid, <laughs> and if we're really honest, both for me, and I'll be honest, I, I'm so afraid that the creatures that I raised up that, <laughs> that they have meaning, that they're good and they're kind and they're compassionate. I want my son to just be a kind and compassionate person. I think we all want that for our kids. And there's this level of when you lose a child, there's this level of, well, now what? How can I, am I now responsible for living their legacy? And so I really wasn't even thinking about what happens next. Um, but when I wrote when I wrote Catherine's obituary, um, I had thought that the the blank where it says in lieu of flowers, like you get a kit. It's it's ridiculous. You get a kit to bury <laughs> to bury your your kid, and one of the pieces of the kit is a fill in the blank obituary. Like in and so I'm and, and I was grateful for it because I couldn't think. But in the line it said, you know, in lieu of flowers, blank donations to go to and Catherine was an Catherine was an animal girl 
like she just liked to go to the pound. You know, I'm not supposed to call it the pound, but it's the, she liked to go to the pound. Um, and I thought, well, what's a six-year-old's cause? Like she didn't give a <laughs> she didn't give an annual contribution. And a and a six-year-old's cause is what's their heart? What do they play? What do they lay on the floor and do? And they all have one. And her her cause was animals. And so, okay, in lieu of flowers, please please give donations in her memory to the animal center of Newtown. I thought that they were going to the pound, the animal control center. I left out the word control. Um, and here we are, eight years later. Um, the animal center of Newtown actually existed. We had no idea. Wow. Um, Catherine was the animal girl. Wow. We had a fish and a dog that I did barely could take care of. <laughs> um, and the animal center came and, and they said, we, we think that with the, m the money that was sent in Catherine's memory, a sanctuary would be appropriate. And, you know, I think that d there's something divine. Um, and I like to think that there's something about Catherine that's sort of guiding this. Um, but a sanctuary, in the true sense, is a place of healing. Beautiful. Um, it has a, been a place where, where I've healed, um, and we're just guided by being compassionate and being kind and fulfilling Catherine's innocent promise of a of a six year old on the floor with the with the mamas and the babies that she played with and and the whispers that she would call out to the creatures that she seemed to collect in our in her presence I'm good and you're safe um, and that place is now the Catherine Violet Hubbard animal sanctuary it's so oh. lovely mm -hmm. well, I can't I certainly can't add anything to that um, I do have one last question uh, blessed be the ties that bind yeah the hymn plays a, a beautiful and I would say important role in the film why that hymn well I um, it was just it was you know it just started as a reference to our town the play our town Thornton Wilder and it, the church choir in our town is rehearsing in a scene and, and that's the song that was how I first heard it and that's really how I know it and um, I think I, the, these stories share the same themes about life and death but family connection uh, relationships the preciousness and the fragility of life the temporal quality you know, and sort of appreciating the moment, being in the moment. Um, so for me, it was, you know, it was really just this, you know, just reference, you know, I just kind of liked it. Um, and then of course, you know, really sitting with it and sitting with the lyrics and how it speaks of connection and the shared woes and sort of the, the, the shared suffering and then in this sort of need for connection, it was, the words were sort of perfect. Um, and, uh, I think it speaks to, you know, the, I guess if, you know, the title for me, it has a religious component. It obviously is a, a reference to these shootings, the type of shootings, but the, it's about the assembling of bodies, the gathering of bodies, you know. To me, it's this secular meaning of just coming together, grouping together, and, you know, for some kind of purpose. And, and that's, that's the, that's it, these tie, the tie that binds, you know, coming together and, and, and being together, the power of human connection. So... I hope that was an okay answer. Oh, it was a beautiful <laughs> answer. Uh, in fact, I, I, the, the, I, after watching the film, I actually uh, printed up the lyrics because they were so beautiful. We share each other's woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. From sorrow, toil, and pain, and sin, we shall be free, and perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. Yeah. So it's a, a beautiful thought, a beautiful film. Um, Mark Twain said, Forgiveness is the fragrance that the flower sheds on the heel that crushes it. Um, Fran, thank you for creating a film that is uh, suffused with that fragrance of forgiveness. Uh, and thank each of you. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for your, um, your honesty, your vulnerability, uh, your compassion, your courage. Um, and thank you again for, for spending this time with us. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Bleecker Street and our friends at WIT PR for allowing us to have this conversation today. Again, the movie is Mass, currently in theaters. Thank you. <laughs>